Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at another viewer donation. This right here comes to me from Hero Rareheart, who you may recognize as the person who donated the Compact Portable 1. Oh yeah, remember that? Yeah, we're just gonna breeze by that for now and talk about this computer today instead. Uh, the really cool thing about this is I don't know exactly what's in here. This is going to be another mystery PC unboxing. The only thing that she told me is that this is a desktop computer from the early slash mid 2000s. That's all that I know. Now, judging from the box here, this is a box for an in-win V-series computer case. So my initial thought is maybe this is a custom built, but I don't know. We're going to just see what's in here. Hero Rareheart did throw in a couple of other things too. There are some Pentium 2s in here from what I understand. And she said this would be like an unboxing straight out of 2005, so judging from all the other 2000s stuff that we've talked about on the channel recently, I figured this would fit right in. So, without any further ado, let's just get this thing open. The box is starting to tear a little bit down here. Let's see if we can just continue that. Oh, it looks like it's going to work perfectly. All right, so... Let's see, and it looks like we have a book. Okay, I don't believe she mentioned this. This is uh, Inside the IBM PC by Peter Norton. Oh my gosh. And there appear to be some pages that have come unbound from the rest of the book. Oh, there is somebody's address and phone number on the top here. I'm gonna have to just cover that. In fact, I just won't even show you this page here. We'll just uh, turn to this page. So yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Inside the IBM PC, access to advanced features and programming. Wow, that's uh, that's like a... Gosh, I did not expect this at all. Really awesome. I think I'm just going to have to flip the box up and just pull it right off. All right. Oh, it looks like I was supposed to open it from the top here because I see there's a motherboard there. Let me go ahead and... Uh throw the box aside. There is a note. Oh boy, yeah, we've got a ton of stuff here to go through. But first, let's uh, take a look at this note here from Hero Rareheart herself. So she wrote, Hey MJD, I hope you find this package as fascinating as I did. I found this and at first assumed it was an empty case that someone threw away, but it was too heavy for that. I took a glance at it and assumed that the case shipped with a power supply, floppy drive, and CD slash DVD drive and was made out of steel, explaining the weight. When I later got out the case to build a retro PC, in it I found that it was in fact a full computer. It is in immaculate condition and it is running an old build of Linux. I couldn't get it to work right. I was shocked that someone built or ordered this computer, unboxed it, then instantly put it back in the box and never used it. You may be thinking this is some BS, but if it was, how could it still smell new? Have fun with this computer, maybe it can be your 2005 era Linux machine. So she did mention Linux uh, in the DM, uh, or in one of the DMs that she sent me. So uh, yeah, this is a Linux computer, and I guess it is a custom built. But before we get to the computer, there are a couple other goodies in here. Number one is a slot loading Pentium 2 processor. We also have, this is the motherboard that uh, she had mentioned she uh, might include. So this looks like, I know I'm not really showing it on camera here. Um, we've got some ISA slots, we've got uh, some PCI slots. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's a date or a manufacturer on here. There's actually a warranty sticker on it for Megatron computer and it's dated uh, 98, 8-26-1998. I'll have to see if I can use this. And this is probably what that Pentium 2 uh, CPU went to, because you see there's not a place to put, like there, there's not a CPU socket on here. And then this right here, this looks incredible. Uh, New Media One Netscape Photo Disk Image Collection. This is New Media. Digital technology and creative verve enable talented designers to arrange visual space in innovative and striking ways. The dimensions of sound, motion, and time invite exploration of areas previously beyond the realm of print. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh gosh, yeah, this is some... This is some neat stuff. I just love looking at old stuff like this. Flipping through old books. I mean, I don't know if anybody would be interested in like, <laughs> I could honestly sit down and like flip through an entire book like this just on video. I don't know if anybody would watch that, but we're definitely not going to do that now. But this is some pretty neat stuff for sure. We'll, we'll set that aside. Now, this here, let's see if this is actually an in-win case. All right, so this is a case from MIB, or perhaps that's the system manufacturer that put this together. So you've got two USB ports on the bottom, you've got your power button, floppy disk drive, another three and a half inch slot, 
You got a five and a quarter inch bay and one of them being taken up by a CD drive. IO wise, it looks pretty standard. You've got, you know, USB, PS2, serial, audio, all that good stuff. There's also an expansion card down here. Let's open this thing up and see, let's see how easy it is to get off. I assume it's going to be done from this side here. And it looks like there are screws to remove. Let me grab my iFixit kit. Oh, what would I do without my iFixit driver kit? Hey, iFixit, you ever want to sponsor my channel, just reach out because I uh, <laughs> I use your stuff all the time. So let's uh, grab the right bit here so we don't strip the screw. Uh, and let me try to actually put it into the driver correctly. There we go. So, yeah. So here Rare Heart said this thing is in really good shape. And, I mean, for the fact that, that she said that it looks like somebody just, you know, opened it and then put it back in the box. Or they just took very good care of it. Either way, let's, uh, pull this out here. Um, oh, do we gotta, like... Oh, huh, you gotta unlock it there. Alright, now it should slide off. There we go. And... Let's see what we got. First thing of note, on the back of the case, you've got this cool looking thing, which I've not seen on a case before, but it just goes over the CPU fan to just contain all of the air. Yeah, this thing is immaculate. So I mean, it looks like we've got everything. We got our power supply, hard drive, floppy drive, CD drive, RAM, CPU, motherboard, obviously. So that's great, a fan over here. I mean, I'm not seeing any capacitor leakage or any dust at all there's not like a speck of dust in here let's just power this thing on and see what it's running i'm really curious to check that out fedora huh interesting fedora core 2.6 9-1.1667 smp survival multiplayer no way uh no okay so we're at a login prompt and i don't know let's try root i don't know what the username and password are. Incorrect username or password. Oh gosh, yeah, this is... Well, we're gonna have to boot into a command line. I would like to get into the BIOS as well so we can actually view the specifications. So it looks like we've got an Intel Pentium 4 running at 2.8 gigahertz with hyper-threading, one gig of RAM, dual channel, so that's great. And the date is set to January 1st, 2002. So, yeah. Let's just, uh, let's just get out of here. So, I think we can just append this and add single to it. And that might boot us in a single user mode. And we should be able to do passwd root. Changing password for user root, new Unix password, Michael MJD. Bad password is based on a directory word. Okay. I think we can still set it, though. Authentication failure. What do you mean it's based on a directory word? All right, let's try that again. Uh, if I can actually t type it correctly. Um, okay, let's do one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It says it's too simplistic. But why is it saying authentication failure? All right, let's just try user add. And okay, so user add, I think we just Michael can't rewrite shadow pa oh pseudo yeah we got to do pseudo pat but aren't aren't we running as root though authentication failure that doesn't do anything it's like i i thought we're in okay so now we're in we're, we're actually running this as root i guess we weren't um, I thought single user mode did. Whatever. Let's just, uh, okay. Pass WD root. Authentication failure. So it's not a, all right. User add Michael. User Michael exists. All right. So the other command did work then. All right. User add MJD. All right, uh, so I guess it added Michael without a password, maybe? Let's just... Oh, I don't have to type sudo. Let's just reboot. Let's try Michael. Password, nothing. Incorrect user... Oh my god, okay.
Oh my gosh, we did it. So it, it was running the uh, restorecon dash v etc shadow command, which did it. Yeah, I just for all the Linux elitists out there, they're going to complain about, oh, this is taking you so long to do. I know not everybody can be as enlightened as you are. Okay, roots one. Holy crap, we're in. So I went ahead and changed the screen resolution and yeah, this is this is looking pretty awesome. So uh, first thing I notice is the Red Hat icon is still up here. So I guess this version of Fedora, uh, you know, had not modified that. But yeah, so we got a decent amount of programs on here. Uh, oh my gosh, look at look at the graphics here. You got GIMP, K Color Edit, uh, a bunch of stuff. So you got some KDE stuff as well. In fact, you can. Uh, there was a KDE mode as well. If we log out here and we can change it to KDE. You've chosen KDE if you wish to make KDE the default. Use the desktop switching tool. Okay. Because I I personally love KDE. It's my favorite. Uh, Linux environment, I would say, out of all the ones that I've tried. So we're just going to swap over to that. But you've got GNOME on here if you prefer that. Oh my gosh, look at all these games. <laughs> we got Conquest, K Poker. Let's see anything that I recognize in here. K Mines, uh, Free Civ. Oh yeah, that we uh, took a look at that briefly in the Win Linux video. Internet. We've got Firefox, of course. We've got Conqueror. Video conferencing. What is this? First time configuration druid. Okay, GNOME meeting. Oh my gosh, look at that logo. Woo! That is some uh, that's some great UI design there, or graphic design, I should say. Um, but let's go into. I'm curious to see if there's anything like on here. If we open up the file browser, although was this the email program? Uh, yeah, that's. I thought that was like the file uh, thing. Just open up trash here. We should be able to get to the rest of the system from that so yeah we're open up in conqueror here and uh let's just see let's go to uh just the root here and we'll back up a bit so let's go to home and oh okay well there's only <laughs> there's only my two user accounts that i've created in here i mean it is nice that there's no personal data on here so i don't have to worry about blurring a bunch of stuff out uh because you know i've definitely gotten computers that have a decent amount of personal data as you guys probably know and so i just always make sure to blur everything out and end up wiping the computer once we've kind of uh, gone through and see what what programs and stuff are installed, but there's definitely a lot of programs installed There's no question about that. I don't know how many of these were just you know came pre-installed with Fedora Of course, we got to open up openoffice.org writer. Let's see what a version this is and I guess we can go to uh, we can run about um, KDE here so about KDE K desktop environment release 3.3.0-5 Red Hat. And it looks like OpenOffice 1.1.2. Oh my gosh, copyright 2004 Sun Microsystems. So this was before Oracle acquired Sun. Oh my gosh, that, uh, that really takes me back. Let's just write ourselves a nice little document here. Thanks so much for watching, if I can spell right this video uh we'll just save that really nice document there and let's actually see yeah, i save it in my home folder here although why does it show oh well because i'm in yeah because i'm logged in as a root okay so we'll just save this as like michael that's fine with me what is is this supposed to be like a Okay, it just opens up help. I was going to say, was that like openoffice.org's version of Clippy or something? Like a little animated assistant, but it just opens up the, the help documentation. Oh my gosh, Mozilla Mail? Oh, was this back? Is this the Mozilla application suite? Let's see. I think this, uh, maybe, maybe it is. No, I think this, oh no, yeah, it is. Navigator. So this is the Mozilla application suite. Oh my gosh. I briefly used the Mozilla application suite when I was making my Netscape retrospective video, which if you guys missed that, you can check that out here. It's like a two year old video, but I'd still say it's one of my favorite videos that I've made. And yes, yeah, so this is version 1.7.3 of it. And that's just really neat to see. So yeah, this was pre Firefox and pre Thunderbird, though we have Firefox and Thunderbird on here oh look at that there's a root password tool 
<laughs> right here. So we can easily change the root password again if we want to. Gosh, there's there's so much stuff in here. But a lot of it is just standard KDE stuff. And there's, you know, some some GNOME programs as well. There's a ton of games. Tux Racer, what is this? I guess we don't have sound working. Let me let me quit out of this and see. Sound card detection. Nope, we got nothing. It has detected our audio device, but it's not playing a test sound. Is the volume just not up or something? Oh, now we can't even close out of this. <laughs> okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we do have sound working. It just played that, that error sound. Okay. Yeah. So we've got sound working. I guess on the menu of um, Tux Racer, there's just no sound. Oh, no, there is. Okay, so we just had to run the sound card detection thing, so... Let's enter an event here. Um, I have never played this before. Canadian Cup. I guess we can't change any of this. You must complete this cup next. Okay. Select a race. Oh, wait a second. Was there? No, these are both grayed out. Okay. Or just not even available to change. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this, this already looks kind of fun. It, it kind of reminds me of uh, Super Tux. I played a good bit of Super Tux, actually, on my iBook G3, actually, back in, gosh, that must have been like 2010. Um, let's just pick uh, Bunny Hill. So this, I guess, is going to be kind of like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's kind of like a snow game thing. So we got to collect these fish here. And we just got to go down the hill. <laughs> this is pretty cool. I just love how Tux was designed. I just saw that. I was like, oh my gosh. So can we like jump here? I guess not. Oh, and there it is. Finish. Woo! You didn't advance. Oh, I guess we didn't... Well, I guess we have to collect all the fish. Yeah. Okay, let's try that again. So I guess you're aiming for like a perfect score here. <laughs> that walking animation is so good. Okay, so... Let's actually collect all of these. Oh no! Oh no! We missed one! Oh, that sucks. You didn't advance, so... Oh yeah, I see, you need to do advance. So you have to collect all of them and you have to get uh, a 35 time. Let's jump to the... Oh, we can't even enter the next race. Okay, so we have to finish this one. So we got 35 seconds to do this. Man, they leave you no room for error. Huh, I guess it's pretty appropriate for Linux users, right? Ha <laughs> ha! Okay. Um... Yeah, this is gonna be kinda close, I think. Oh, come on, come on! You advance to the next race! Woo! Okay. Um... Twisty Slope. Tight twists make grabbing herring difficult. Hard turns will lead you to victory. Okay. Let's go. I think we'll just do this one and we'll call it a video. I didn't even see what the qualifying time was, but I assume you have to collect all of these. Oh no! Oh my gosh, that was way too wide of a turn. Oh no, that's gonna screw me up, isn't it? That's gonna really screw me up. Oh gosh. Alright, we probably didn't advance. Yeah. What do we need? 24. That's probably all of them. Well, we've got one life left, it looks like. So, let's just try it again. And then we'll call it a video. Oh, 
Oh gosh. Ooh. Nice. Oh no. Oh wow, that was clutch. Oh no. Oh no. We missed one. I think it said 24. If it said 20... Oh no, yeah, we need all of them. Dang it! That one screwed me up. Okay, well, yeah, we don't have any lives left. So I guess we're just done. Uh, oh, okay, so you just have to restart, I guess, from the very beginning. But okay, we're just gonna call it for Tux Racer there. But yeah, I guess we're gonna do the credits, though, as the uh, video ends off here. So there you have it, guys. I gotta say, really awesome little PC here. Hopefully you guys will uh, see some more of it on the channel. I don't know how long I'm gonna keep Fedora on it, uh, but I mean, it's definitely, you know, like I said, a mid-2000s, early-2000s PC. So, I mean, we could put XP on this thing. We could put another Linux distro on this or just, you know, keep it perpetually on Fedora. But yeah, there you have it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, turn on notifications, all that good stuff. I want to give a huge thank you to Hero Rareheart once again for her very generous donation to the channel. And thank you to all of you guys for watching. As always, I will see you in the next video.